Good morning and welcome back to Kids Zone. It's really good to see you. Thank you for joining us again. We really look forward to you being with us. Today's session, we're going to be thinking about what it means to be family. And we're going to hear about a woman called Ruth and her mother-in-law called Naomi. And we're going to hear more about that story later. But our first song today is going to get you up and moving and we're saying nothing can separate us from the love of God. So you need to get your finger going and a wee bit of movement going because we're going to stand, we're going to come together and we're going to sing to God. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. So let's do that. Come on, up you get. Let's go. <laughs> Would you describe your family to me? You might say your mum and dad, brothers or sisters, nieces and nephews, aunts and uncles, grandmums and granddads. Whatever it is, your family will look different to other people's, but families are really important to us. And I've got some photographs to show you. Now, I have a family. I have a husband called John and my daughter, Rachel, she's 24 now, she's a big girl. But I've got some other family that I'd like to show you. So this is a photograph of my dad that was taken quite a while ago. And this is my mum with her sister and her husband. And they were very, very close to me. And then this is my favourite photograph. This is a photograph of my nieces and nephews along with my daughter who was just a baby and it's lovely to remember those times when they were growing up. Families are really important to us and I'm going to tell you the story of a woman called Ruth who had a mother-in-law called Naomi and in this story Ruth is a widow and so is her mother-in-law and a widow is someone whose husband has died so when I'm telling the story and I explain about the widow you'll know that that means that they don't have a husband and when the person dies and in those days if a woman was left on her own without a husband then they didn't have anyone to look after them or to support them so Ruth would have to go out and worked in order to help to keep the family together. So we're going to hear the story today of Ruth. And when you hear the story of that family, I want you to think about how God worked in that family and what was the outcome of it. Let's hear the story of Ruth. So let's hear the story. And the story is called Ruth's New Family. There was no food left at home in Bethlehem, so Naomi and her family went away to a land that had plenty of food. They stayed away for a long time. I must go home again, Naomi decided one day. She was all alone now, no husband and no children. Her husband and both her boys had died. 
I will go with you, said Orpah, who had married one of Naomi's sons. Let me come too, said Ruth, who had married the other. They were kind girls, and they both loved Naomi dearly. So they set out together. But on the way, Naomi said, It was kind of you to come so far, but now you must go back to your own family. The girls both cried. They loved Naomi dearly and they didn't want to leave her. Sadly, Orpah went back. But Ruth held Naomi tight. Let me go with you to Bethlehem, she said. From now on, your home will be my home. Your people will be my people. Your God will be my God. Ruth would not change her mind. So they went on together. And there they are, waving goodbye to Orpah. When they got to Bethlehem, everyone was very excited. Naomi, is it really you? After all this time? And they all talked about Ruth. How kind she is to Naomi, they said. It was harvest time in Bethlehem. They were cutting the corn. Naomi and Ruth were very poor. They had no farm of their own and no one to help them. Ruth went out to the fields each day. She picked up the corn that was left to make bread for them both to eat. The fields belonged to a farmer named Boaz. He saw how hard Ruth worked. He heard how kind she was. And Naomi was one of his family. Leave plenty of Ruth for Ruth, he told his men. So the men left some of the corn so that she could pick it up and take it home to Naomi. Wherever did you get all of that corn? asked Naomi when Ruth got home. Ruth told her about how kind Boaz had been. And then Naomi had a plan. Ruth deserved a husband of her own and farmer Boaz was the best man around. Naomi's plan worked. Ruth and Farmer Boaz were married. They had a baby boy and Granny Naomi was so pleased she jigged the baby on her knee and they laughed together. Thank you God for making me happy again, said Naomi, and for giving my kind Ruth a family of her own. One day, when Ruth's baby was grown up, he had a little grandson of his own. And that baby's name was David. And David became a great king. But that's another story. Isn't that an amazing story that Ruth came from a place who the people didn't belong to God's family? And when she knew about God, she followed Naomi to Bethlehem. And then God gave her a family of her own by meeting Boaz. And he was a very kind man. It's an amazing story because at the end, remember I said to you, why, where do you think God was in that story? And what did we hear that Ruth's grandson was David, who became king? And I wonder if you picked up where they lived. They lived in Bethlehem. And someone else very, very important was born in Bethlehem. It was Jesus. And so that's an amazing story. So Ruth was David's grandmom, grandmother, and he was a descendant of Jesus. So Ruth had a very important role to play in that family, in God's family. And sometimes our families can change, but God is with us and he looks after us and he cares for us. So that's a good story about Ruth today, isn't it? 
Ruth was a very brave woman. When she was a widow, that meant she didn't have anyone to look after her. And she lived with Naomi, and when Naomi decided to go home, Ruth said that she would go with her. And what did she say? She said, your people will be my people, and your God will be my God. Ruth knew God. She knew that he was looking after her, and looking after Naomi. And she wanted to be in a place where she could be part of his family. And that's why she went to Bethlehem. And when we hear that story, we hear about people who had a difficult time. So she was a widow, she didn't have a husband, but God was looking after her and he wanted her to have a family of her own. And when we think about our families, we're very grateful and thankful for them. Naomi got to bounce her um, grandson on her knee and loved just having that new part of a family together. And we're going to pray for our families today. We've done our five finger prayer before. We will be praying for different people. And we're going to think about that with our families today. So when we think about our thumb, we're going to think about those people who are closest to us. Our mums and dads, then grands and grandpas, aunts and uncles, cousins, and then we'll pray for ourselves at the end. So let's do that. Let's first of all put our hands together and we'll pray for those who are closest to us. Father God, we thank you that you love our families. We thank you for our families and the way that they love us and care for us and support us. And we pray today you would be with our mums and dads, that you would be with our grands and grandpas, that you would be with our aunts and uncles, with our cousins, and even Lord, we just pray that you'd be with us today. Thank you that we can be part of your family and we ask that you will help us to love each other in an incredible way. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. So that's us for today. Thank you again for being with us. It wouldn't be the same without you. We look forward to you being with us. If you would like to get in contact with us, we would love to hear from you. So put a wee message onto our Facebook page or onto our YouTube channel. You can do that. If you would like us to pray for you, I'd love to do that too. So again, just put a wee message for us and we'll pray for you. And I'll be praying for your families this week. So anyone who's listening, or anybody who's watching, if you want to put a wee photograph of your family up or say who you are, then we'll be praying for you. And if you've been doing something nice with your family, how about posting that so that I can see what you're up to. Meanwhile, stay active, stay smiling, stay praying, and we'll see you soon. God bless you. Bye. Goodbye.